I want to briefly review the distinction between functional and imperative programming and try to clarify what we mean by side effects. It can be hard to get functional programming if you've never used a functional programming language, which most of you haven't. Start by understanding that a function is something that returns a value. In a programming language like Java, we can have subroutines with the return type of void that doesn't return anything. In a functional programming language, everything is a function, so everything returns a value. In functional programming, there is no such thing as a function with a void return type. Let's look at an example. Here is code you might see in any imperative programming language for calculating the area of a window. This is not functional programming. Each statement returns a value that gets stored in memory. We'll cover this in a moment, but storing something in memory is a side effect. Here's another way to write the same code, which would still look right at home in a Java program. In this case, we aren't storing the intermediate values for length and height. We're just immediately using them within another expression. This is kind of functional, but we still have an assignment and a side effect. Here's the same statement written in Lisp. This is how we might write the same thing in a functional program. Imagine if, instead of calculating area once and storing the value in the variable area, we used this expression everywhere we wanted the value of area. It might be inefficient, but it's definitely functional programming. Now, a brief digression about side effects. Basically, when we change a value that's stored in memory, that's a side effect. The phrase side effect implies that what we're doing is unintentional or a mistake. Most of us first learn about programming side effects when we learn about changing the values of global variables within a subroutine. But any assignment that changes a value in memory is a side effect, whether or not it's intentional. Some people describe imperative programming as programming by side effect, because almost every statement in an imperative program has at least one side effect. One of the things that students really struggle with the first time they look at a functional program is figuring out the order in which things happen. If you look at an imperative program, each statement is on its own line and the program runs from top to bottom. But what if you get a Lisp statement that looks like this? What happens and in what order? In a functional programming language, what you need to remember is that the sequence of steps is determined by the order in which functions are evaluated. Just like in math, inner functions are evaluated before outer functions, and there is an order established by rules of precedence and associativity. For example, if this was a Lisp expression and we wanted to write the equivalent imperative language procedure, we'd start with F2. The rules of associativity in Lisp say that functions of equivalent precedence are evaluated left to right. After evaluating F2, we would look at the functions within F3, which means F4 would be evaluated, followed by F5. Those intermediate values would be used to calculate F3. The process would repeat, looking inside F6 and then F7 to get to F8. Then we could evaluate F7 and then F6, and finally F1. One more thing to keep in mind. Just because functional programming doesn't use side effects, that doesn't mean it doesn't use variables. Variables in functional programming are defined implicitly. Every time you pass arguments to a function, those arguments are received by the function as variables. The important thing to remember is you can't pass variables by reference with this approach, so changes to those arguments can't be passed back to the subroutine that called them. You may have noticed that I've tried to be careful to say functional programs or functional programming rather than functional language. The truth is that you can write functional programs in C or Java, and you can write imperative programs in Lisp. There are some pure functional languages out there, like Haskell, but they are pretty rare in practice. The setQ statement is how you create a side effect in Lisp. SetQ lets you assign a value to a variable that can then be referenced and changed later. So returning to our earlier example, if you really wanted to implement the above expression as an imperative program in Lisp, you could do it, but I'm not sure why you would want to.